In 1900, the country of Iraq did not yet exist. Two empires ruled the territories that would later become Iraq. The Ottoman Empire controlled Mosul, Baghdad, and Basra, as well as most of the Middle East, while the desert belonged to Imran al-Jabal Shamar, the Emirate of Shamar Mountain, an empire run by the Rashidi clan, whose reach extended deep into Arabia. The Emirate was less of a cohesive state than a loose alliance of nomadic tribes. They depended on Ottoman commerce, while the Ottomans relied on the Rashidis to rein in tribal raids. Both empires entered the 20th century with a tenuous hold over their territory. The Ottoman Empire was based in Turkish Anatolia, but Iraq was populated by Turks, Arabs, Bedouin Arabs, Kurds, Jews, Circassians, Turkmen, Armenian Christians, Assyrian Christians, Chaldeans, Muslims, Shia and Sunni, Yazidis, Zoroastrians, Baha'i, Shabak, and Yarsan. The people who lived in what became Iraq had no national identity before the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. They defined themselves by tribe, by race, and religion. European powers fashioned Iraq out of territories with no common identity that the Ottomans had barely ruled. The Ottomans sent thousands of troops to suppress revolts in Iraq in 1897, 1904, 1906, 1907 and 1909. When called upon, Arab tribes allied with the Ottoman Empire frequently refused to fight their fellow Arabs. The Rashidis captured Riyadh from the Saudis, smashing the Saudi state in 1891. The Saudi royal family fled to Kuwait, ostensibly a vassal state of the Ottoman Empire. Kuwait was, and still is, run by the Sabah family, which, like the Saudis and the Rashidis, dreamed of one day ruling the Arab world as a family. Kuwait gave the Saudis refuge, aid, and arms, while the Ottoman Empire sat back and did nothing. Neither the Ottomans nor the Rashidis had the capacity to force Kuwait's cooperation, particularly because, like other kingdoms within the Ottoman Empire, the Sabah and Saudi families both had relationships with the British Empire. The Ottomans sent a negotiator, Talib an nakib an Arab Ottoman official in Basra, to make peace with the Saudis. an nakib had gained notoriety by publicly accusing the Ottomans of kowtowing to Britain's commercial interests, betraying Islam in the Arab world, and opening the door to European conquest. Privately, he suggested to the British that if he were made king of an independent Basra emirate, they would have a loyal ally at the head of the critically important Shat al-Arab waterway, an offer so enticing that years later, British officials considered crowning him king of Iraq. Germany and Britain both wanted to control international trade and transportation routes through the Middle East. Britain had the Suez Canal, a passage that gave British warships easy access to their Indian Empire. Germany wanted an alternative route to threaten the British and project their own power globally. In 1904, the Germans began construction of Baghdad Railway, a vast railway from Konya to Baghdad and eventually Basra. The unfinished project turned Iraq, an irrelevant backwater, into a strategic asset for the ailing Ottomans. If Germany had completed the railway, they could have transported German troops from Berlin all the way to Baghdad and then to Persia and India, threatening Britain's colonial empire. The Ottomans could have drawn upon the German allies to finally subjugate the Saudis, the Rashidis, the disloyal Sabah family in Kuwait, and the rebellious tribesmen of what would later become Iraq. In 1914, Britain, France, and Russia went to war with Germany, Austro-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. British troops launched the Mesopotamia campaign, marching up the Tigris River, expelling the Ottomans from Basra all the way to Kirkuk. But the campaign was no cakewalk. 500,000 men died on the road to Kirkuk. The British lost several battles in an offensive that was supposed to distract the Ottomans from the real war in Europe. The British did manage, however, to eliminate one major threat to their forces before the campaign even began. The Rashidis, who had already lost Riyadh and Qasim to the Saudis, were preoccupied with defending Majma'a and simply sat at World War I. In 1916, Britain and France signed the Sykes-Picot Agreement, dividing the post-war Middle East into spheres of influence. But the British knew they needed Arab assistance to break the Ottoman Empire. Henry McMahon, Britain's High Commissioner in Egypt, instigated an Arab revolt against Ottoman rule. He secretly promised to reward the ruler of Hejaz, Hussein bin Ali, after the war by recognizing Hussein as king of a new Arab state, encompassing virtually all of the former Ottoman territory in Arab lands. The British gave inherently contradictory assurances to both France and he has, with little concern for how they would reconcile their promises after the war. When the war ended, Britain signed the Armistice of Mudros, recognizing Ottoman sovereignty over Mosul and Suleimania, but European powers just kept on fighting. Greece and Italy seized western Turkey, while the British took Mosul. In 1920, the Ottoman Empire faced the very real danger of outright foreign conquest a prospect that provoked a revolution in the Turkish War of Independence. The Treaty of Sevres would have partitioned not only the Ottoman Empire, but Anatolia, between Britain, France, Greece, Italy, Armenia, and Kurdistan, with a Turkish rump state operating out of little more than Ankara. Mustafa Kemal, an Ottoman military official, disregarded the edicts of his superiors and established his own national government and army. 
His forces expelled European troops from Anatolia and forced the occupiers to negotiate a cessation of hostilities. He transformed the empire into a Turkish republic. Mosul, however, stayed within the Iraqi state, splitting the Kurdish minority between Iraq, Turkey, Iran, and Syria. Denying the Kurds a national homeland after World War I set the stage for a century of rebellious secessionism, terrorism, proxy attacks by rival states, and ethnic cleansing. The British had secured their position in the Middle East, but a new challenge emerged, governing the territories they had conquered. 